everyone! Today I have the last paint in my little series of testing out my new extremely granulating Daniel Smith paints new to me. It's always an occasion when I pick up a few new tubes from Daniel Smith because it is an investment. I've mentioned it in the previous video. I highly recommend starting with their dot uh, cards. Even though they cost money, I think in the long run you will save yourself money if you get those uh, dot cards because then you'll you can compare paints and see how they perform and see how they look before you invest in a tube. So um, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I would love to have you here. And let's get painting. Today we are playing with Lunar Blue, which is a beautiful, beautiful color. And I'm excited to see how it plays with the other ones in my palette and how it compares to uh, similar blues and if it will make it into my LA palette. <laughs> Let's see. It happens to be that I have an old half pan of Lunar Blue in my stash. I got it years ago from an Etsy store that sells, I think uh, the store is still around, and she sells Daniel Smith half pans and she's been selling them for years before Daniel Smith came out with their own half pans for some of their colors only in sets. And I got this color from her. I got a bunch of them. This was the only one that I had issues with, issues with, and I don't think it's the seller's fault. I think it's just the paint. I hope they changed their formula because I use my paints always dry and then I rewet them. I hardly ever use them straight from the tube. So hopefully this one is better. And you can see this is a dark blue that separates into this lighter shades of blue with really a combination of dark and light granulations. It's really special and spoiler, I love it. Hopefully it stays as lovely as it is when it's straight from the tube, also when you re-wet it. And I will definitely be adding this to my palette because I really think it's a unique and beautiful color. Now, I was trying to see if my other blues were kind of close to it. I have there, what did I try? I think Sodalite Genuine, Mayan Dark Blue, I think I tried. And there's a sparkly blue from Daniel Smith. And none of them are really similar to this. So I think it's a good uh, addition to my collection. Now, I was kind of surprised, but some of my favorite mixes were the green colors. And that's because I'm just not a huge green fan. But the greens here were just beautiful and across the range. So from those more yellowy green up until the turquoises and close to the original color, I absolutely loved them. I started with Naples yellow at the top row. That's the mixture you see. Now I'm moving on to my vermilion light. This is a Schmieke color I have in my palette. It's kind of like vermilion, but uh, transparent. And I love it. It's a very orangey red. Again, you can see, I just, the mixtures with this paint are magical. You get these muted purples and that blue granulation. I love it. I love it. I love it. So moving on to, I think quinacridone pink is going to be the next one. I really tried to keep you zoomed in as much as I could and also remind myself to move my uh, sketchbook with partial success. So sorry about that. <laughs> That's the problem with zooming in that sometimes, you know, you get into whatever it is that you're doing and you kind of forget that you are out of frame. So we'll, we will have photos at the end of the video of close-ups. So you can take a look, you know, pause 
and take a good look. I really tried to edit them to look as close as they do in real life. Usually that's not a huge problem, but I do find the turquoises don't translate well in my photos for some reason, so I always have to adjust it. Hopefully I did my job well enough and you can get a good idea of how this actually looks in real life, you know, under natural light, in good lighting. So with quinacridone pink, you get these more vibrant pinks than we got, of course, with the vermilion. Now you can see, again, beautiful across the board from the pinkish ones all the way to those uh, colors that are very close to the original color. Again, I'm out of frame. This was actually, I'm really sorry about this, but this was one of my favorite, favorite mixtures. And it's actually a color that I'm not sure I will leave in my palette because I don't use it enough. And I think I can get a kind of similar effect with buff titanium. So the color I used here, there we go. I did it, I remembered, is Naples Yellow Reddish. It's a schminke color, and you can see it. It's on the left side of the top row in my palette there on screen. And the mixtures are just so beautiful, especially the ones that are closer to the original color, the Naples Yellow Reddish. It's like these beige, yeah, beigey colors with a little bit of blue granulation. It's beautiful. Now I wanted to see how it plays with some of the other lunar colors that I got. And I mixed it with Lunar Earth, which is, it's it's a color that I'm a little bit, I guess I'm most curious to see it in action because I'm not really sure what I think about it. And it does make lovely mixtures. So these two really neutralize each other. And you can get really beautiful gray, brownish colors with both granulations, like both of the granulations from each color. Then I tried Lunar Red Earth, which I love. Lunar Red Earth and this color, Lunar Blue, are my two favorites from the one, from the four that I got now. And really with both of them, I, I love kind of all the mixtures that I got. So with Lunar Red Earth, we get very neutralized blues and I guess with a hint of like purple from the Lunar Red Earth. And now I wanted to show you, oh, and I see that my video skipped. So I'll tell you and you'll have to take my word for it and also look at the pictures at the end. I also tried to do kind of a classical mix with Burnt Sienna because I know it's a super popular paint. And can we just enjoy these glorious greens on my screen? I think I used <laughs> Indian Yellow. It's either Indian Yellow or Quinacridone Gold. They're both so kind of luminous. And I think it's Quinacridone Gold. Look at these these are like earthy, but still luminous to me. And I think they're beautiful, beautiful. If if I have to paint trees, you know, I say if I have to, because they tend to be green and I'm not a huge fan of green, but I can see myself using this kind of green just because it's so beautiful with all that texture and blue granulation. Okay, so just a word about the mixtures with burnt sienna, because burnt sienna is uh, such a wildly popular color. They're gorgeous. Again, it really neutralizes each other. So you get these grays with some of the granulations from Burt Sienna and some, I have the Daniel Smith one, and then a lot of that dark blue granulation from Lunar Blue. Really, really lovely. What are we going to do now? Now we are going to try ooh, another favorite, Cobalt Violet. These are, I think the purple mixtures are a little bit more boring just because, you know, we're, we know we're going to get purple, right? We're mixing violet and blue and it's just, it's just for fun to see how they go together, especially because Cobalt Violet in itself is a very granulating color. So it's interesting to see what happens. And it's kind of, it depends. The more you get to the 
pure colors in these mixtures, the more their own granulation kind of takes over. But somewhere in the middle, you get um, really fun muted purples with what looks like purple granulation, but not as bright as the cobalt violet. So yeah, those were, you know, it's, it's a bit boring. <laughs> But I really like the more interesting mixtures to see the kind of neutrals that I get. I was also curious to see how it would behave with my brilliant purple. This is a Schmincke color. It's like this very intense fuchsia type of pink. It's very similar to Sennelier's Opera Rose or Holbein's, Holbein's Bright Rose. Uh, Shinhan has a uh, color by the same name that is also very similar. Uh, I have right now the Schmincke version in my palette. And again, here you can really get more vibrant purples because that color is so, is so vibrant. And I was just testing it because as I was um, mixing it, I thought it looked very similar to Ultramarine Rose and I wanted to see if I was right and yes indeed I'm also looking at it now when everything is dry very very similar effect so if you don't have Ultramarine Rose this can give you a similar result and much much more so I really find it to be a very versatile color now I'm mixing it with buff titanium and I have to say this across the board with all these super granulating colors I really love them with my kind of light pastel colors my Naples yellow Naples yellow reddish buff titanium even gray titanium I find these really appealing I think they would be fantastic for urban sketching light washes because Many times those are the colors that we see in cities. You know, you have a lot of gray, whether it's the sidewalks, concrete, asphalt, skies. So I think these really shine in those kind of mixtures. And now we see it with gray titanium, kind of boring, but again, it's a really good mix. Um, I, I love these kind of neutrals. I mean, brown, not really, but these types of grays and beige colors, I love them. So yeah, now I also tried it with a turquoise. Again, it's kind of boring because they're close to each other. So you kind of know what you're gonna get. And it does give these really nice turquoises with a darker granulation, very appealing. I think these would be beautiful for like a stormy sea or more like those deep turquoise waters. I think this would look great when you want, you know, that texture that you get from the paints um, granulation. And yeah, let's take a closer look. So here you can see the Naples yellow reddish. Isn't that beautiful? That fourth color from the left side makes me feel happy. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, and at the top there, you can see the brighter uh, purples with quinacridone pink. Now we are looking at the greens that you get if you mix this with, I'm going to say it's quinacridone gold. I'm pretty sure that's the color I used here. Aren't they beautiful? I just love this. And then below that, we have, what did I mix it here? I mixed it with the um, Pyrrol Scarlet that comes in the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set. Here's the mixture with Naples Yellow. If the mixtures with Quinacridone Gold were more like luminous and vivid, these are more muted. And I love that. It's like painting, you know, a dusty field of trees or some plants or I don't know. I just loved it. And yeah, here's another shot. You can see there the bottom, those mixtures with a Pyrrol Scarlet beautiful beautiful very very muted purples i really like that and if you add just a little bit of it to pearl scarlet you get these kind of muted pinkish colors so yeah what can i say i really like this color my only kind of worry with it is how it will reactivate i did you know put a little bit of it on my palette and then 
over the course of a few days. I used it and it reactivated fine, but I just had that bad experience with a half pan and I'm really hoping they improved their formula or maybe I got like a dud one or something like that. So if this performs the same way that it does straight from the tube or after like a couple of days on my palette, I will be really happy and very excited to introduce this to my um, kind of regular palette and my travel palette, hopefully. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this color. If you have it, if you've tried it, how do you like to use it? If you think you'll pick it up and I will see you in another video soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.